All right, let's talk about the MVP frontrunner all of a sudden. He didn't enter the night as the frontrunner, but largely due to what Purdy did, uh, uh, Lamar, who also had a great game in his own right, is able to overtake Purdy and get the, uh, you know, be in the front uh, of the pack right now. And you have to think if they win out, he's going to win his second MVP. You're now talking about you know, him in the Hall of Fame discussion. I think two MVPs probably gets you in the Hall of Fame. So absolutely huge Christmas for him. But, you know, as of right now, I'm sure he's just happy he got the win. Let's talk about how he was able to do it. First, you know, going to go a little bit chronologically here. You know, the offense wasn't exactly lighting the world on fire early on, especially in the red zone. They were moving the ball, but red zone was kind of where, uh, you know, things started to get a little tough weren't able to turn some drives into touchdowns. This one is a third and eight, and you see the 49ers, they're just playing playing cover zero, which is a coverage that has given the Ravens some issues in the past because all you have to do is just get one guy to win. Lamar is going to have to get the ball out of his hands, so you don't have to worry about him running. Uh, and then basically you have to either, if Lamar throws it down the field, you know, uh, don't uh, allow the receiver to win that one-on-one matchup. And if Lamar throws it underneath, then you just have to run up and make a tackle. On this play, Lamar is going to flip the ball to Aguilar, and Aguilar is not able to make a man miss. Good play by the 49ers. Again, it's a smart concept. Again, part of you know Lamar's value is that legitimately the best strategy for teams uh, over the course of his career has been get the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible. The issue, you can't do that every play, uh, and even when you try to do that, it's not always going to work. For example, something like this is a, a great example of what Lamar can do if you try to play man coverage. Not a cover zero, but again, man coverage has also given the uh, Ravens fits over the years because, you know, historically they haven't had receivers that can win on the outside one-on-one. -on -one. Been a lot better this year, which is why I think you know the Ravens are probably the most complete team we've seen in the Lamar era. You know, I mean, obviously the team that, you know, had the one seed a few years back was amazing too. But when the Titans beat him in the playoffs, it was due to this exact coverage. Titans were running this coverage all the time. Well, one way you can win is by winning on the outside. Another way is what Lamar is going to do on this play, where you see Aguilar's route. That's not even his actual designed route, but it's just what's going to end up happening. Because watch how Lamar is going to take the snap. He looks down the field, doesn't love what he sees, but then the Lamar stuff can happen. Watch him get outside the pocket. And that's just, I mean, it just makes things really difficult, right? I mean, we're talking, this, I mean, this has been over five and a half seconds at this point. That's twice as long as you usually have to cover as a defensive player. You're just probably not going to be able to cover that long in man coverage here. Lamar is able to flip the ball to Aguilar and they get a touchdown. So in some ways, they've been able to win on these, you know, situations because Rashad Bateman or, you know, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. or whoever is winning on the outside and getting their wins, but also... Even if they don't win immediately, Lamar can give them extra time and then someone like Aguilar can get open. Just what makes them so difficult. And also, we got to talk about his running ability because, like, I mean, it, it is. It's just, it's so incredible. I, I think that it's one of those things where when you have a rushing quarterback, everyone kind of always says, well, yeah, well, how's their throwing? How's their throwing? Can they throw? Well, you know what? It's also important of how good of a runner are they? Can they make uh, plays happen that way? And Lamar is a great thrower. We, you know, we'll talk about that more. But the running ability is still uh, what he does better than anyone I've ever seen play the position. This is zone coverage on a third and 16. You wouldn't think much can happen here. Although, it is worth mentioning, you want to make it an easier field goal. Yes, Justin Tucker is amazing, but still, uh, he is uh, technically still a human, uh, I believe. I, I, haven't, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure he is still a human. So, making it as easy as possible, still a good idea. Watch as when Lamar takes the snap, he's going to not love what he sees. He scrambles up and, you know, at this point, he's still looking down the field. And that's that's part of what Lamar does, right? And part of what makes him so difficult to defend against is even when he starts scrambling out, a lot of times he still throws down the field like you saw in that last play with Aguilar. However, here he's going to scramble up. And at this point, you know, when I'm watching this, I'm just thinking, OK, you know, might even just try and go out of bounds or just they have two timeouts left. Just slide at this point. You made it an easier field goal. Definitely a good situation. But, you know, despite the fact that it's Fred Warner, one of the best linebackers in the game trying to defend against him, it's Lamar Jackson. And I don't care how good you are. Lamar Jackson's going to beat you. Watch him just completely juke out Fred Warner. It was a tough play from Warner. He had to try and get over, but that's just what makes Lamar so difficult. You have to run full speed to try and tackle him, and he can shift so well that, you know, he can get by you. Uh, reminds me a little bit 
of a you know a sort of a famous moment when two Tampa Bay players, uh, uh, Warren Sapp and John Lynch, uh, they were playing the Lions. And John Lynch uh, was early in his career, was having a great season. Uh, he went over to try and tackle uh, Barry Sanders and just got completely, you know, uh, his ankles completely broken by Barry Sanders. Warren Sapp helped him up and said, welcome to the club, because that's what Barry Sanders did to people. Well, Fred Warner, welcome to the club, because that's what Lamar Jackson does to people. But then also going over here, so, you know, plays like this were really important, I thought, and really ended up being important as the uh, 49ers kind of made the comeback. It's it's funny, you know, uh, you think about the Super Bowl these two teams play. That's, you know, every time two teams that have played in the Super Bowl recently play each other uh, again, even if it's completely different rosters, still my mind you know, is always reminded of that Super Bowl. That was a game where the Ravens got a huge lead. The 49ers nearly came back, but couldn't quite get it done. Wasn't quite as close this time as it was in the Super Bowl, but just interesting. But yeah, okay, important play. Going from field goals to touchdowns here, really kind of a clever play call where part of what the Ravens do so well is run the football. So use that to your benefit. Have kind of a fake pitch. So it's a you know, it would have been a creative type run, but they're faking the creative type run and having multiple players run over the middle. And look at as when Lamar Jackson takes a snap, watch how out of position some of these 49ers players are, specifically the safety who is currently, you know, uh, just as close as Fred Warner, the linebacker is on this play. So because of that, Zay Flowers behind him is wide open. Watch Lamar throw a perfectly accurate throw. Good job by Zay Flowers to, you know, run his route. But really clever play call as well to just fool San Francisco. And this is what Baltimore is capable of. The Ravens just have a way to, you know, to do things like this. And if they can consistently, uh, you know, fool you, it's just so hard to win. They're already such a talented team. Even when you're not giving them extra steps, it's hard to cover them. But when, you're, you know, you're getting out of position as well due to good play calling, it's nearly impossible. One more thing to bring up, Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely, the tight end who, you know, Mark Andrews goes down. Uh, maybe he has a chance of getting back if they make the Super Bowl, which seems possible at this point. And in fact, seems like the most likely outcome at this point. Although still, nothing is guaranteed, of course. But typically, Mark Andrews at times has been their number one receiving option. Well, the nice kind of silver lining is it's given Isaiah likely more snaps and he is a really good tight end for them and he showed it on a play like this. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup here. Watch as Lamar takes a snap. Again, worth mentioning, this is the coverage that has given the Ravens fits in the past, but you see when Lamar hits likely, he's as open as it gets in the NFL. I mean, this is wide open right here and that's what you want to see if you're a Ravens fan. Guys getting this open and as you see, watch what Likely does after the catch as well. So, I mean, great stuff from Likely. And they just have so many guys who are coming through and playing well right now, right, in the receiving core. You know, uh, I think it's true that, listen, they don't have a Justin Jefferson, right? They don't. But Zay Flowers is great. Isaiah Likely is great. Uh, I think Rashad Bateman, I, I know his numbers haven't been spectacular, but he, he's made some real plays. And Odell, again, maybe he hasn't been Giants Odell, but he's still been really awesome at times. And even Aguilar made a few plays. So when you have so many different guys, who can come through when Lamar is playing at the level that he's playing at. Like, should Lamar win MVP? I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it at all if he won MVP. I, I still think, and, you know, maybe not everyone's going to like this uh the take, but I, I would still probably lean Josh Allen in this scenario as my MVP pick, but I wouldn't be mad at Lamar Jackson uh, MVP. And more importantly, who cares about the MVP? You want to win a Super Bowl if you're a Ravens fan, and can Lamar and the Ravens win a Super Bowl? I think they're the favorites too at this point. So yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.